this week on IFBB AMA Podcast. It's not just filling out a muscle. You also have to worry about your your waist in this. I don't have a small waist. I have to have, like on show day, very small amounts of food. I control my waist like crazy on stage. It's a, a pride point for me, right? I put in enough food the day before, so on show day, I'm full and it's just a little bit to keep holding me. I have that day to eat and the next day to really restrict food so I can keep that small waist to control it on stage. On today's episode of AMA Podcast with Chris and Milos, we had John Jewett, post-Legion, second place, his debut in the open class, fresh off that 212 win. He wanted to give it a shot, and boy, he delivered. We talked all about his prep going into that from the last win as a 212. Came in at 224 pounds, just about, I believe, 10 pounds heavier than he was on the 212. And boy, was it a spectacular package. Talks about his new direction and where he's going to go. If he's going to do Olympia or not, you're going to have to listen to find out. Ultimately, kind of how he found his stride with this whole peak and the whole process of open kind of being his new thing. It's a great podcast. John's a wealth of knowledge. You will always will learn something from a podcast with John on it. Check it out. Mr. John Jewett, fresh out of the first time hitting the open class and making a sure statement, which Milos and I had a side conversation. We're like, we kind of already knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Everybody knew. Listen, before he says anything else, uh, of course, we follow you, everything that you do on social media. I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of everything that you do. You're so educational, so transparent, and so impressive. Jesus. Uh, I mean, going into the show, I, I think uh, I sent you the message. And actually, uh, uh, at uh, at the one point, maybe I, I wrote, you're my uh, favorite to win. But then I had to probably delete because if you publish this and I have my athletes going into the show, that wouldn't look good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so, but, but seriously, congratulations. It was very close. It could have gone either way. But let's hear it from you. How did you see... Uh, your condition, your shape, your size, and uh, how did you match against them? Yeah, I mean, well, first off, thanks for having me on again. I mean, just to get coverage from Legion in general, it's it's nice because a lot of times going into Olympia, everyone's talking about the Olympia, and Legion's kind of a forgotten show almost. So thanks uh, for having me on. But with with the Open... <laughs> I'm competitive, man. So there's, there is expectations put on myself. Like I train, I want to win this thing. But at the same time, I realize there's almost no expectations because I've never stepped on stage with any of these open guys. Um, I, I realize though, like I am bringing something very competitive. You just don't know how it's all going to stack up and line up and see, I saw a lot of predictions out there and fair enough. I, I couldn't be mentioned too strongly because I'm the two twelve guy with Kind of the question mark around them. How are you going to fare size wise next to the open guys? Um, and it's funny, you know, at check ins and even backstage lining up, I'm, you finally feel like I feel like a big guy in 212, like everyone's shorter than me. But going in the open, like there's all these taller guys, huge structures. Um, I was in line next to William Martin, who was like the Brazilian. He's, I don't know, he's like six feet tall, like 340 pounds in the offseason. Like, He's a tremendous man. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, uh, I'm going to maybe be tiny out here. Um, but, you know, I, at this point of competing, I love being on stage. Like, I'm so charged up, but it's, I have no nerves, right? Like, there's no heart rate elevation. There's no shakiness. It's just like another day to me. And it's so uh, confidence inspiring to walk out there with that feeling. And I can take in all the different moments. Um but I, I just pose and go about it just like it's my passion. So it is what it is. And as we're going through it and, um, you know, you get in that first call out, you know, like, all right, I do fare well. Let's let's turn this up. And then getting back into the, the top three confirmation, um, it's just continuing to amp you up while you're up there on stage. And I had an idea that Charles was going to be very comparable to me. Um, for conditioning standpoint, for what he was posting up. And I guess the thing was, was how would size comparison look? And, you know, looking back over stage picks, I realized, you know, Charles, and, and I talked with Tarek Gundy too, post-show, post-contest, and 
Um, Charles has a very good taper. Like his waist is very small. It flows out to his quads. He has wider shoulders than me. So just as a silhouette, his muscularity caters to that really good X frame. While my waist is a little bit bigger, my shoulders aren't quite as wide. And so there's some tissue that probably needs to be added to accentuate that, that frame. Uh, potentially could argue maybe my condition was a little better in, in shots from Charles, but I don't think yeah, it was enough to offset the amount of muscularity that he brings to have that type of X frame. So um, I, I thought their judging was completely fair. Justin Rodriguez um, has a tremendous amount of muscle. The guy has crazy shape. I think just he had a, a, a bit of condition that still needed to come through. Uh, likely Justin, a condition Justin hits a, Someone that could win a sh- win win the show potentially, right? Like we've seen Justin, I think at the Arnold, where he was tremendous. So, and um, so I think all the lineup and everything was was very well done as far as the judging criteria goes. And to be see my picks now and be like, wow, like I really fared well even size wise um, in, in the open. So all very exciting for me. You know, it's like in a new territory. Mm-hmm. This was going to ask you, how did you, now that you see the pictures and the videos, okay, here it is, one by one. I, I mean, nobody would ever know that you had 212. I mean, look at that. Yeah, no. Look at that. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, uh, Jay Cuddle was freaking out about your peaking biceps, okay? <laughs> There's a, yeah, seriously, and, and it's like, I, I didn't notice this. I mean, you kind of notice it, but... Uh, when you really pay attention, it's like, holy shit. Yeah, dude. you could notice the height difference. But in regards to the thickness of the back, you, you have a thicker back here when I first look at it. And the detail and the glutes and the hams, I mean, it's just, man, it's so it's awesome. John, I was like, when I didn't know what was going on, because obviously, you know, what, two hours behind, right? Two hours behind Central Time. Yeah. So I was like, I'm re- refreshing Instagram every two seconds. I'm like, dude, what's <laughs> going on? What the, what the hell is going on? They can do the call outs. And then I remember, I think in the first call out, did you inevitably end up right dead center? They, or was that they, later? they split the box, right? So no okay. one was in the center. Yeah. Gotcha. I was like, oh my God, yes, he's in the, he's in the center. Um, yeah, but- I, I was watching a, a live stream, of course. Uh, I, I watched every second of it. And, and like I said, I was expecting you to show up freaky and you did show up freaky. Now, I mean, it's interesting that you said that the, uh, you think that you uh, kind of out-conditioned uh, uh, Justin. Justin was crazy conditioned already, right? Uh, especially when you look at him in a, in a that side tricep shot. We mean well, Justin or Charles? No, Charles. Uh, wait, no, no, hold on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, he looked yeah. off. What the hell? Yeah, Justin was not uh, uh, conditioned at all. You know, uh, I, I do think that if Justin was conditioned, he would, you know, give you guys run for the money, but uh, there was a parent. Uh, I'm thinking of Charles Griffin. I don't know why I, I uh, made this, that mistake. You going into the show, you can see that the gnarly, crazy, full, dry, hard, everything. Uh, the the Charles Griffin, if you remember that the low pulley cable rows uh, that he was doing on Instagram, I mean, that was like crazy hardness, like transparent, like zero skin you know then side triceps when you see that uh shoulder striations and tie in and then triceps just popping you know th- that was like super super impressive so i didn't know how you guys been a fair you know do you have a video uh, uh, john do you have a video on your page i i don't no i don't have any videos up of it so we have yeah. we haven't seen any like high quality video footage come out they recorded it but they just haven't delivered it yet. So Dude, right now we should still have like, these are like camera phone shots, you know, um, that, those are Charles's shots. Like this side try and his side chest are, are tremendous. Right. I, yeah. I think where it, he doesn't fully twist to the side though, but he has so much mass. It almost doesn't matter. I think he was also trying to maybe, um, and I, I can't speak for Charles. If he was trying to hide that peck, cause he had that peck, Injury? I don't know, but either way, his side shots are are very phenomenal. Like the uh, that side try, how it cinches down to his waist, his big delt, and um, you can see the 
the leg discrepancy in size. And I have big legs, but Charles in that shot is is pretty um, overwhelming um, size wise. Chris, Chris, look at look at this shot. I mean, there is no way that uh, you are you are giving up any muscle, anything. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, you know, this is super comparable in size. I mean, you really, really how how heavy were you? Two twenty five. Uh, two, yeah, 224, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay, so that's the question. Had you uh, qualified for Open Olympia as you already qualified for uh, 212, which one would you choose? I uh, absolutely would do the Open. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It, it's just, look it's, at the shot. Right? It's, it's like so shot hard right to have, like, I gained so much fullness out of my front shots going from because when i did atlanta i was about 214 on stage so we're talking about 10 pounds of stage weight with i i'm conditioned right so there's not like i was five pounds fatter and five pounds fuller right. uh so to to sacrifice that much i lose so much like in my quads my delts that it's just it's just a lesser look and how do you go back to that we're bodybuilders right we want to see improvement so i realized like at the open olympia I probably would be in the maybe the back of the pack, and, and that's okay. Um, but I'd really be stepping on stage at my best and amongst the best in the world because we know, hey, the Open is is truly the, the pinnacle. So um, I, I won't even – probably the follow-up is that I am qualified for the 212 Olympia, but I, I won't I won't do it. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Hit it, hit it. Hit me out. Hit me out. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> My, I mean, let's see me compete all year. I do have yeah, a show. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, no, no, but, but here, here. Uh, John, one million percent. Because I, I don't even know when I was talking to uh, Dennis and Chris and we were talking about 212, I, I didn't even uh, realize that you were uh, qualified for it. So I didn't even put you in that, uh, you know, uh, top three uh, consideration. Now, seeing everything that I'm seeing, okay, uh, this should be your last 212 show ever, Olympia, that you have a chance on just squeaking in. And you're, you're a magician as far, as far as conditioning and how you control your body. You just need to make that goddamn weight, hopefully two days early or something. I don't know when it's going to be a weigh-in, but I hope they're going to give you guys a chance. And maybe if you guys, you know, call the, the hey, like, listen, Give us a chance to to uh, weigh early, so we can we can refresh, we can uh, uh, load up. I see you super competitive to the point of being able to win two twelve, and you know, as a friend, kind of, you know, I would hate to see you lose that opportunity. I mean, it's like it's there, three weeks away. You look crazy. So you know how? Okay, you, you don't use aggressive methods of dehydration through diuretics and all that shit, which I want to find out exactly what you do because you mastered it. But uh, sometimes just to make the weight, right? You squeaked in, you know, you make it, okay, and now uh, you do your thing. And uh, I believe like in 24 to 36 hours, you can put back this kind of, and showed up to 24 on 212 class and I would size them, and you know that uh, your conditioning is going to be comparable to Sean Clarita, you know, the the best of the best. I, before you answer that, thinking. before you answer that, I just want to say one more comment before we move on to that. <laughs> <laughs> and as we've all had this conversation before, bodybuilding is a muscle show, right? It's not just a condition show. And like after seeing you, John, in the open, I totally agree. It's kind of like your best overall fit is definitely the open because there's no, there's nothing you have to worry about in regards to weight or doing anything extreme. And it's like the two twelve guys, since they are so short and so bubbly and round, it might be difficult for your physique to get that round bubbliness and be at its optimal look being that low weight cap, you know? Um, but it's just awesome to see no limit. Cause I remember you sending me that picture, that video you were posing outside a couple of weeks out and you're like, what do you think? I'm like, dude, overall, it's like, Obviously, I've seen you drier, but like you sacrifice so many other things to get that tiny little bit more detail on the back or the glutes. But like in hindsight, looking at it on the day of the show, it's like it's all there and some with the fullness. Oh, yeah. So anyway, 
You know, what is your thinking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't worry. I have I have done mental gymnastics to like go through every scenario and what I would be okay with. Like if I made those calls, like would there be regret in any of them? And also looking at like, what is my ultimate goal and why and, and what I'm doing? And absolutely is to, to bring about the best and see out my best potential. And what is the fast track way to do that? It's probably not dieting for another five weeks and, and sucking down because it takes, it takes five weeks away of what I could put into an off season and get back on stage sooner in the open. Right now, with that being said, the open, I, I mean, two twelve. you know, I, I've done these two twelve shows. I stood next to all the same, I've done three Olympias, right? So I've stood next to these guys three times in a row. And also this Atlanta show was put, potentially my best version of two twelve. So I've had, that was a 36 hour weigh in. So I know what I can do relatively in that time period and how much I gained back before it. I don't have time to clean up the, the water aspect, right? And the weigh-ins for Olympia, usually it's the the Friday. No, I'm sorry, we compete on Friday. It's usually one day out in the morning, and then we compete the next day in the morning. So it's a 24-hour, like usually tighter window. So mm-hmm. I now have a shorter window than I had in Atlanta to fill out more, which also knowing standing next to these guys before, I don't think I still would gain back the roundness and muscularity that I need for my structure. Um, to, to overwhelm like even what Sean or Keon or, or even Angel has. So I've been fourth at the Olympia. If I can't exceed that, I, I, I don't care about a placing. Um, I don't care to go to be fifth or sixth. Like that doesn't even matter to me. Um, and honestly, I'd be okay with never getting into that top 10 again if I did the Open but I could see the best version because I've done the Olympia. I've, I've satisfied that myself. Like if I never did Olympia again. I, I could live with that. Uh, but knowing I saw out like that best version. And so th- those were the, the hard thinkings I had to go through. Uh, and, and realize like, Hey, I'd rather take the next weeks of just improving to really hit it hard in the open for next year. You know, again, if I ask you, Chris, if John is not here right now, do you think that he has a legitimate chance of winning 212, showing up similar to uh, um, Legion? You know, meaning he's going to have to uh, tighten up just to get under the 212 and then have like, okay, 24 hours to uh, uh, fill up. I mean, he would be... Super competitive with a legitimate chance. I, of I agree. I agree with that look that he brought, John, you, they mm-hmm. brought to the open. But I also know what John's saying, 36 mm-hmm. hours versus 24 hours. And yeah. I've also been in that situation before where when I was younger, making weight and then filling out was relatively easier. And then four or five years later, trying to do it again and again, it became more and more difficult. And it's honestly... It's not like it's a crapshoot. It's not like it's rolling the dice, but it's a little more finicky. It's not like you can have all variables controlled. And 24 hours is not a lot of time. It's not, you know? And 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 the the thing about it, too, is like it's not just filling out a muscle. You also have to worry about your your waist in this. And, And for me, like I don't have a small waist. I have to have like on show day very small amounts of food. And I control my waist like crazy on stage. Like it's, it's a, a pride point for me. Right. So I put in enough food the day before. So on show day I'm full and it's just a little bit to get, keep holding me. And so I need that for two twelve. So it's not just, you'll eat for 24 hours. Like I have that day to eat and the next day to really restrict food. So I can keep that small waist and control it on stage. Um, and and I, I did a similar thing for Legion even too. I just had longer to be able to, to eat for. Um, so yeah, it makes another I, limitation. Know, yeah. yeah. Which uh, changes the whole look of your physique too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was watching, um, you were stating how you had like first two meals, uh, 300 grams of carbs total, like 150, 150 day before, right? Which is considerable amount of carbs per meal, you know? So I, 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 I don't know how you continued 
uh, you, you actually put exactly protein and fats in, and I, uh, I even think that you mentioned how much water you did, you know. So what did you end up doing uh, carb-wise on the uh, uh, day before the show, Saturday? Yeah, so one, one day out, <clears throat> one day out I, well, in poor, like two days out I actually started carving up. Um, throughout the week I was waking at like 222, and I was reducing, I, I count my steps, right? So, you know, I have like 12,000 steps a day is my goal. My legs were kind of heavy. Um, I'm doing three rounds of posing a day at this point. That's also making my legs pretty heavy. So as I start mm -hmm. tapering that down, um, I see my weight start dropping, but also mm -hmm. like I'm getting, my legs look fresher, but also just putting more food in. I think I'm just getting more energy and robust, right? So I'm kind of burning through it faster. So my weight starts dropping earlier in the week. So I'm adding in more food as the week goes on. And by the time I get to my two day out mark, I'm still waking around this 222 mark. And my carbs are kind of at a baseline around 400 grams. And that's been kind of wow. maintaining. This, that, this... that was Wednesday? Yeah, except one day, the day I flew, um, which that was, let's see, that was three days out. I flew to the show that I didn't train that day. I was just an off day and I kept food lower just because I knew I wasn't going to be that active. So it was 250 grams of carbs. Um, and, and then that next morning I, I woke back, this was two days out to carb up. Right. So, um, I, that's when I woke up at, at 222 again. And, uh, that first day based on like Atlanta and having an idea of what I need to car up on. I did almost, it was about 700 grams of carbs on uh, two, two, two days out and not, I it lowered protein a little bit and fats. I didn't add any in. It was just carbs. Um, the next day, one day out, I dropped lower in weight. So I dropped like half a pound, mm -hmm. but you have to keep in mind to not just go off the scale. Right. Because, my legs were sh sharp and crisp, right? So like they were recovered more. So there's probably some water loss there. I didn't eat any veggies two days out. So also I could, man, I could vacuum out easier. Like there was GI weight lost. So even though weight came down, I do think there was some transition of like lower weight in my gut and also less water on my legs and also some gain of fullness too. But to, uh, on that two days out mark, I go and do a practice. Uh, I, I actually, I train that day, a light pump up in the gym. I do, I try to time it around the same time I'd go on stage. So I get yeah. an idea, right? Like you have this much food and this much fluid. Like, what do you look like? What are your, what are your visuals? And I kind of knew all week, like around two meals in and about a gallon of fluid post training, I would be about two twenty four, And it was, it was gnarly, right? Like I get a great pump the veins were popping out. I was still like had a bunch of glute lines. And um, you, you probably seen some of those gym videos yeah, that I was man. posting that that was it. That was the look. So like, I'm just going to walk on stage like that. So at nighttime that that two days out, I keep carving up, I get up to 229. And I have that seven pound drop overnight. And so I have all this data. So I know how to schedule it for one day. out. So one day out. I was like, well, I'm going to need more food today because I had such a large drop overnight. I need more to stick. So I ended up putting in um, an extra about 100 grams of carbs, so 750 grams. And the reason it also went up higher was because after midday, my weight was not moving up the same anymore. Like it was 225. I'm like, oh, man, so this last, last couple of meals, I needed to put it down. So like my meal five out of six – um, was 160 grams of carbs and I added another 15 grams of fat in just to make the meal more calorie dense because the volume was getting so large. And man, I was getting kind of concerned and in my head that last meal one day out because I, I know I needed, my weight was still at like 227.6. I needed to get up higher to make sure I don't have this huge drop overnight. And also so I wouldn't have to eat so much on show day. But I, I, I was got in my head because I'm the, I could feel like the fullness there. My hands were getting tighter. Like I was starting to like, it was all starting to kick in and swell up. And I was so full. I'm like, man, I'm not going to wake up on show day. Like with a small waist. 
but I, I stuck to, I was wait, stayed up a little later. I took some walks. Digestion was moving. I, I put in uh, my last meal and I, I woke up mid sleep um, for show day. I was like, well, I'll wake up and I'll see how much I've already dropped and this will help me gauge. So I was like 225 mid sleep. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. I went back to sleep and I woke up on show day and I was 223. So up a pound, all that food started, had stuck a little bit more. Um, I had, had a fuller look and now I only had one pound to go, right, to hit that 224 mark. So I wasn't going to need as much food or fluid in as what I had previously, you know, done, done before. So, um, what one day out, yeah, that's, uh, our show day was just a very small volume. Um, I, I, I use foods that bodybuilders probably would be like not normally using, but like my meal one Milos was 45 grams of whey protein, 200, sure gram, 200 grams of rice, um, 30 grams of dried cranberries and 25 grams of almond butter. So I, I raised fats up a little bit to make it more, more dense and, and a little less carb. And I, I had some rice cakes just cause I like rice cakes. Uh, just two, two rice cakes. Um, prior to that meal, I did my normal fluids I have for the day. So it's 12 ounces of water and 12 ounce coffee. I ate meal one and had eight ounces of fluid with it. Now what I do, since I know my weight doesn't need to come up as high is when I, I bring back fluids down Two. So if carbs are coming down, I bring fluids down. So I, I did uh, about 30 ounces of fluid from meal one to meal two. Meal two, I was at 224. So I'm like, this is it. I'm on visually. I could walk on stage right now. I just need to do my normal pre-workout meal that I was doing, which that again was whey, rice, uh, two Rice Krispie treats because they're, they're dense, right? And uh, a little bit of almond butter. And then I, it was about probably two hours later by the time I was going out on stage. From that meal to stage time, I just had a, a shaker of water and I would just take some sips if I ever felt kind of like my mouth was getting dry. Mm. And that was it. I, I walked out on stage and did my thing. Post so, so how much yeah. How much water did you say it was total before pre judging? So um total to have four like, plus sixteen? Yeah, total it was it was uh it was about 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 seventy ounces, about half a gallon. That's, that's... And, and and just to be clear, you didn't use diuretics. I used all the diuretics. No. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I didn't use any diuretics. No. I love it. I love it. I I, I always want to I know you don't. I know you didn't. I just want to drill that into people who are always just so fixed on asking me, hey, what diuretics are we using for a show day? And it's like eight weeks out. It's like stop thinking that it's just a necessary process, necessary step of the process. It's not. And for somebody like yourself who achieves that level of condition and dryness in the 212 and the open with all that food, making weight or not making weight two days before and having to fill out and still not using diuretics coming out goes to show that it's very possible to do so without them. Unreal, man. But but the last uh, part of the equation that uh, a lot of people are going to question it. Okay, so that was the carbs. Protein was uh, yeah. obviously decreased. A little bit of fats per meal. Okay, uh, uh, fluid. Uh, it looks like you you got a, a lot of fluid, you know, considerably. That uh, the day of the show, everybody just like sipping, you know, drinking like very very little, you know, on the race. How how about your salt all mm -hmm. the way through? Consistent, yeah, I assume. Yeah. So um, during peak week, I was doing a quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter with with every meal, um, and. That I just kept consistent the whole time. So, and, and I, I feel like that was completely adequate for, and, and that's not counting other sodium, right? That's intrinsic in food. But for yeah. the carb amount, it's more than enough to, for what I've used to uptake those carbohydrates. Um, my only, only adjustment I made was my last meal, I, I doubled the sodium. Um, and it, I feel like just a little cute bump in sodium. Because water, the water water follows sodium, right? So you yeah. have this bump in your serum sodium level. It pulls a little bit more water into the vascular system, and you could get some veins popping out and a little bit, a little bit more pump that way. 
So that's the only adjustment that I that I, I made. But I, otherwise, it was very consistent. Uh, potassium wise, I, I don't I don't count potassium. I, don't, I mean, I don't track it that um, anally. I just have yep. a consistent base of what I've been consuming potassium wise through foods. It's also why I start putting in like some dried fruits and things like that because my veggies are coming out, which give you a lot of the potassium sources. So like some extra like fruits are going into, it's like a, an extra benefit right there. The, the dried fruits are, they have potassium, they're calorie dense and, um, and it wor- works well like that. So yeah, you said dry, dry cranberries, right? So uh, did you use them throughout your prep? Uh, okay. Or you didn't even occasionally. I, I don't just... have the luxury to really do that, <laughs> but, uh, I did use, um, in Atlanta, I used dates, dried dates. And at, at the place, the Homewood Suites we stayed at, they had all this dried fruit. They had raisins and cranberries. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm taking those. Like, I'm just going to use these. So, so I, I, I mean, it was uh, two days out. I had, I had trialed them, right? I had put them in and that there weren't a problem. So on show day, I, I knew it was going to be, be fine to utilize those. I've, I've used banana before. And in Atlanta, it gave me reflux, like the first mm-hmm. meal I even had it. And uh, so like that, that was out because banana is kind of nice because it kind of makes your food moist and easier to get down. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it just didn't, it just causes some GI issues for me. John, what about, uh, yeah, I'm assuming you have no issues going to the bathroom, right? It's like stool regularity is not a problem because probably stress is pretty low, but have you ever had to use Ducalax or Colace to kind of keep things flowing even with the fluctuations of food or travel? Yes. I mean, personally for myself, not too often. I mean, definitely for clients, I've seen all kinds of situations, but where, when I've run into the problems was in the past using diuretics and using like all kinds, I've done, all, I've done it all guys. I've done, what do you name it? Water tapers, water cuts at the ends, water cuts and diuretics. Like, but if you start pulling water out, and keep eating food. This is when you're going to run into GI issues. And, and when I've woken up on shade day, sh- a show day, and I feel like nothing's really moving, um, I've tried just using like magnesium citrate at night, like the natural calm magnesium. That almost stayed a consistent in prep before to help just go to the bathroom. Um, I've done the like just a dolcolax the night before just to make sure that I am emptied out in the morning. But at, at this point. I stay so regular in prep because I've made it more, more attentive to like making sure I have fiber in my diet and in past preps, it was all like you eat chicken and white rice and green beans and there's like no fiber and to where like my, my bowels are so small and there's plenty of water there. It's like, what else is lacking fiber? So now like I have like oats and pumpkin and all kinds of things in my diet to making sure I'm getting like, 40 to 50 grams of fiber per day. But I, I found Chris, like pulling out the fiber, like two days out, ha- have no issues like with, with bowel function, probably because there's, there's plenty of water present. Um, all that food's starting to go up. Yeah. Like it, it's, uh, the, um, you're like uptaking more. You're like devoid of fiber, right? Like you're just digesting and absorbing it all. So some people get worried. They're like, I haven't had a bowel movement today. It's like, well, do you feel like you need to have a bowel movement? Are you constipated? Like, well, no. Let's say, yeah, you're just like eating more highly digestible carbohydrate or just not a lot in general. So um, yeah, at, at least at this point, yeah, no, I haven't had any issues with GI wise. I think a lot of it has to do with keeping water there. Um, and, and probably like you said, stress really low. Yeah. I always yeah. notice that people, you know, like IBS is like the nervous man's disease, right? It's like, yeah. you know, people who are always like super anxious all the time are never people to be like, yeah, I'm totally regular. got no problems. It's like <laughs> they're usually always like intermittently bloated, constipated, having issues with their GI because they're such high strung individuals. Um, but being calm, managing fatigue and making sure that's ironed out the last week is essential for that whole transition to carb up. Well, well, listen, I'm sure that I'm speaking for, for many competitors that are now watching. I mean, uh, everybody had to be impressed with, with the John, what you present on the stage. Of course, it's mind boggling for me to, to see that you were uh, dieting on 400, 450 grams of carbs. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, yeah. I think I think everyone needs context to that, right? Because I had done Atlanta, and I had already died it down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, we Renee and I, we went to Chicago the next weekend. We ate a bunch of crap, and I, I had to pull a little bit off. And but the still the lowest my my carbs were getting were like 250 grams uh, on like some off days and some training days. But eventually, you know, I was conditioned again. And it was just raising food back up and kind of coasting along in maintenance. Um, I had some days I dipped down, you know, and then I just hit, had, hit some high days, which a high day for me was like 450 grams of carbs. And that would bring weight up, training performance would improve. And so I was just kind of toggling at that point between some high days and going back to lower days, but but never needing to go below that, that 250 gram carb mark, at least, you know, since I had it was already conditioned. Yeah, but that's into the show. But last week, like I said, Monday, Tuesday, you already did the 450. Yes. Which was a high, high carb day. So pretty much you did a high carb day every day except traveling on Wednesday, right? Yes. You know? Yeah, so this is unreal. And uh, uh, the water intake throughout, I mean, uh, normally uh, throughout the week, what would you have? Two gallons? Two gallons. Yeah. Two gallons. And salt would be regular uh, one quarter of the... Uh, teaspoon per meal and like six meals a day right right yeah yeah and that does not change all the way to the uh night actually not even for a prejudging right you did the the same salt monday i mean uh, sunday day of the show yeah it was just that that second meal i just had a bump in sodium yeah. and, and that was it yeah. um I, you... I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I was gonna say it? like um because kiss a point about like like I would say like this protocol works for me. Right. And to give context, like don't copy that because I am the guy that gets grainy hard and fullness is my issue. So I, I have, I have, I can keep a lot of water in and I'm better with it. Uh, the times I do diuretics or hard water cuts, I lose the fullness and the condition is not the issue. Now I have guys I coach where they're so round and full, they just don't bring condition. And so they're the guys that have to have like the more aggressive water restrictions in place. So it's not like don't ever make water reductions. You know, it's just what do you need to assess for that person and what they need? And don't just chase condition. You have to have to consider fullness. So it's always finding the balance, right, of what, how much water that person needs to put in, how, how aggressive you might need to cut it or not. So should you ever use a diuretic? Yeah, there's been cases where I, they do happen, but I will say through my experiences, it's less and less um, yeah. that they actually and, need to and go minimal, in. And minimal amounts, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I completely, listen, uh, I mean, I, I just love everything you do. I'm so impressed uh, with you and uh, also oh, as a coach. You. <laughs> and an ex-competitor, of course, I always, listen, I, I did like 110 shows. I said that uh, before. I pretty much did a little tweak every time. I never did exactly the same, right? You experiment and you, then you recognize, you identify something, but then all of a sudden, oh shit, that's not enough. I need more. Or, oh, this is way too much. I better back off. You know, these kind of things. I'm sure when Regan is going to be listening to your uh, 400 grams of cards, he's <laughs> yeah, he, put- he's going to be upset. <laughs> yeah, he's going to put him next to nothing. And then Jay Cutler just a couple of days ago, you know, saying like he was doing like 50 grams of carbs for a behemoth. Like he, he's like 270 pounds, right? And he's dieting on 50 grams of carbs. Jesus Christ. But then if you listen to his uh, podcast, there will there would be a year he, he never cut the carbs. He never did even the cardio. You know, the, the guy that does two hours of cardio normally for some shows, he did zero cardio and, and never cut the carbs. Yeah, so it's always... But I was just wondering for you, because that was your first open show. So I, I assume you want to be jacked. You want to be fuller. And I was thinking, like, maybe you will sacrifice your conditioning because, you know, you have to think that. Okay, he's going to go against the big guys. He's going to want to show the fullness. And he might lose it. But you were not losing it at all going into the show. Like, And then when you step right next to uh, Justin Rodriguez and uh, uh, Charles Griffin, you didn't uh, get any smaller whatsoever, right? The, nothing. 
you know, even the legs from the side that, that, that you say, I mean, yeah, look at that. I mean, arguably, I almost think you were sharper because you were fuller. And legs are bigger, right? Legs yeah. are bigger for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, it was it was interesting because in the first comparison, and I, I don't know where, I don't think I have it posted anywhere, but I stood next to William Barden, right? And he's arguably the biggest guy out there. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say posing, it, it's so important. And there's the, my whole first comparison in the quarter turn, all these guys are standing um, ne nearly you know, sideways to where they hide their back shoulder. And they're not wrapping that shoulder all the way around to create that taper. And like, you could pose and look dramatically bigger. And uh, it, it's just, yeah, some guys are, are really limiting themselves with, with their, their posing and, and hiding a lot of their body parts to create that large, just taking up space. So no, have you, have you always done a side chest like that with your arm back? It looks great. I, I, I've messed it all up before. <laughs> I, uh, this year I was like, okay, I just had glued in my mind how I needed to hit it. So, um, I, I didn't realize your biceps was so peaking. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah. Really, what, what just this part? Yeah, Man, they've yeah. been like that since like middle school. I've always had these crazy peaky biceps and abs. Uh, so I was the guy Dude, in middle school with biceps that, and abs. That looks awesome. Yeah, I love that position of that hand. That is great. John, I meant to ask you, you know, this is a total mind F for a lot of people is when you come out of a show, right? And you have that perspective and expectation of the condition you brought with that 212 that you won. And then now you have these weeks to go to open, right? And now you're seeing yourself all the time, possibly looking less sharp. Because you're in your mind, your expectation was what you were seeing, or what you usually bring as a 212, but now you're totally going into uncharted territory. Did you ever kind of get in your head a little bit with like fullness, size, loss of definition, week to week? Because you know what it is, when you're coming down in prep, you're seeing changes visually every week for the positive. More lines, more lines, more lines. So now here you are trying to find that perfect balance between that fullness and the lines, but you're already lean. You know what I mean? I do know. And Chris, you probably do know. I get in my head, of course, right? It's, yeah. uh, it, it, it's just looking back and trying to be unemotional, like, and just looking back over all, all my contest photos, right? So I would compare back all the way to Atlanta and look at the visuals and how many weeks out I was from there, um, how comparable I was across all my shots. And then I also... I also track some caliper sites, um, skinfold sites on my fattest body part. They're not official sites, but I, yeah. uh, I track it on my, my upper back right below my scapula and then my so lower scary. back and then my glute and, and Renee does all these for me. So <laughs> she's been doing it for me for a few years now. So I, I know like when I am like one week out, what these sites should be. And so I at least have also some, a little, you could call it subjective, but I think it's still objective. It's a measurable site that I can look back on. So like, all right, if the glute is five millimeter, there's lines from my butt crack to my hip, you know, when that, when that happens. Um, and all my, my caliper site numbers are like comparable to what I was in Atlanta. When I look at all the visuals, it's like, these are all very close condition wise. So almost what's harder to Chris was seeing the scale go up and being concerned that I wasn't getting, I wasn't lean enough and wanting to yeah. drive it back down. Right. And, uh, and, and chase like every little detail in. So yeah, I really had to gauge off past data and, and almost throw some like throw out the scale in certain instances. Um, but also know like, what is my strong suit that I'm playing here? Right. Being conditioned. I know. I'll, and even in two twelve, you see it. The guys that are second call out, they usually just are there because they didn't have condition. And we see it more in open because guys have the same idea of being full. And I keep bringing up William Martin because the guy's enormous. It's like five pounds of stage weight for me means nothing when I'm standing next to a guy that's like 270. You know, it's like five more pounds of like condition that I pulled off. That's my strong suit to play. Like I bring, I bring balance 
and I bring condition. Like, don't sacrifice those things. Um, and let the fullness happen and, and don't don't worry about the scale going up. Because seeing it go up, I, I shocked myself. I thought, like, I was going to be maybe maybe 219 on stage, maybe 218. I, I think we talked about this, Chris. Like, like, from Atlanta being 214, I couldn't gain that much, right? But then here I am, like, 224 on stage. I'm like, holy crap. Like, I, I didn't think that would, that would happen. I could have limited myself in that. So, you know, coaching myself is a real challenge at times. But I can also sit back, look through the data, try to be as objective as possible and, and make the calls and then be at peace with it and not keep thinking about it all day. <laughs> yeah. It's like those objective, uh, those objective measurements you have and the data you've accumulated over time helps you stay in check and prevents you from overthinking. You start overthinking, you're like, well, let's look at the numbers. Well, obviously, I'm not seeing myself clearly because these are the same numbers I had before and, the, and that kind of thing. I, I, I totally get it. I, I like... I knew that, but I just wanted you to say that because I think that's it's such an important aspect for a lot of people to understand and see because I see so many people get themselves all worked up in their head. But I'm like, if you look on paper, what's going on? What's going? What you think is going on? It's not happening. You know what I mean? Like it's a little bit more in your head than they might think it is, and so like it's an it's an important aspect and and one super important thing to consider that you you touched on but it wasn't emphasized is you're very calm and relaxed on the day of the show Be, being on stage is a happy place for you you're not shaky you don't have elevated heart rate and like i have some clients i'm sure you do too like the, they act like they're getting ready for ufc fight like they're gonna yeah. get their face pummeled in it's like slow your roll it's okay you're not gonna get harmed you're not gonna get hurt like you're just going on stage with all the work you did and they're they're all nervous and all worked up and that can play that can be so impactful on your body's response to all the things that you've tried and set up for a projected carb up in a water cut you know all of a sudden you're super anxious not getting sleep and all that that can throw it all off so it's like so important just to kind of detach emotionally and just be at peace you know it, uh, it, it wasn't always like that <laughs> yeah two more things to ask uh, uh, for me as a coach to to learn from you and from everybody else to learn, you know, right now. Two more things that uh, we didn't discuss. Did you use anything for a pump up or that last meal that you mentioned with the Rice Krispies and uh, double salt, that was it? And how long before the stage that was? And then what did you do between pre-judging and finals? Yeah, I, I wish I had some magic formula mm -hmm. that I could copyright and sell off uh, in some ebook or something. But I, I don't. Um, I, I truly believe like on show day, you should be relatively pretty much on, right? Like if you had these meals all week long, what what are you going to throw in last minute that all of a sudden you need to that you've never even tested? Like I've seen people, you've seen it too, right? Crazy stuff backstage. Um, yeah. I've seen a bikini girl like eating peanut butter out of the jar and then like posing. And then go eat more. <laughs> what, are you, what are we doing here? So no, for me it was uh, my la my second second meal, and that was it. That's all. That's all I had. Like the key to a great pump is water, sodium, and carbohydrate. There's no special formula out outside of that. Um, there's little things like I, I I had a figure pro do her pro debut, and she had her normal pre workout that she had all prep long. Um, she had a little that before she went on stage because we've been trialing it the entire time. I didn't use my normal pre-workout because it was giving me reflux. So I'm like, forget yeah. it. I'm just not going to do it. So, yeah, for me, it was just sips of water because I was loaded. I was full. Like, nothing else needed to happen. Um, just walk just walk out there. Now – You mean taking 50 milligrams of Cialis is not a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> We used to do Viagra back in the day. Right? <laughs> Get a massive yeah. headache on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah drop your blood pressure, right? That would be... <laughs> well, dude, it's funny you say that because I had a client, right, who just recently competed. He actually did well, and um, he won his class, but he has he's an older gentleman. He's got high blood pressure, um, and it's controlled through medications. He's on three different medications, and he goes, what about Cialis? I'm like, listen... When, when, when we're in a situation where water's reduced, you're on blood pressure medication, we're not using diuretics, I'm not going to add in something that's potentially drop your blood pressure day of the show. 
not doing that. There's no way. That's not worth it. One, we never tried it. And two, and it's just three, is it going to be beneficial? Were you going to be like, oh my God, these insane pumps right now? Probably not. <laughs> Especially I, with I've one. I've never seen lower. it work like that. Or yeah, no. more vascular. It, it, does, it doesn't really work like that. I mean, the enzyme that it blocks is like around close to the heart and also of course down in penile tissue. It's not like you're just blowing up your veins everywhere. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. So anyway, but most people get headaches. Like you said, Chris, like, oh, it'd be yeah. terrible to have on stage. I think. Um, oh, all congested. Uh, another thing I actually have a, I had a guy from Reno is asking me, Oh, he, he got some vodka and something else. I don't know. Some fucking alcohol, you know, there was vodka, <laughs> you know, and sh should I use it? I said, did you ever use it? No. Do you ever drink it? No. So why would you use it now? Because somebody suggested, right? Like night before. And I've seen backstage. They, they do that. You know, you sometimes. Can you imagine just like that. not knowing and then you drink alcohol and you get sick? Like it messes your stomach up like bad? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. So what did you do between pre-judging and finals? Yeah. So I, I went back to the hotel. And what I do is I weigh myself. And I see how much weight I drop over the stage, and I replace that with water. That's my first step. So I went from 224 to 223.2. Um, so I put in 12 ounces of water, and I, I don't I don't get overly anal and weigh myself again. But I start with hydration. Um, then my meal three. So this was now at 2 p.m. So we're looking at about about a four hour gap from when I had my last meal pre judge and back to the room. Um, and I went with my, my normal carb amount that I'd been using that entire morning, which it was, it was like roughly, I think it was right around 90 grams of carbs and about, about 12 grams of fat, 40 grams of protein. Cause those were, my, those were my morning meals and that was mm -hmm. holding my weight around 224. So all I needed was enough to hold me there. So I already had a little bit of data from the morning, right? Milos, like I, I knew the meal and I knew the fluid amount that would hold me. And so after that meal, um, and that meal actually had some chicken because I knew it was going to be a little bit longer till going back on stage. And I wanted something that was going to sit a little bit heavier just for fullness right. sake. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I use, uh, some people might find this interesting. I, Renee and I, we, we uh, pressure cook our chicken. So, and then it's like, or slow cook it, whatever you want to say then she'll take a hand mixer and mix it and it'll turn into like very, very fine. So if you think about it, your enzyme, your stomach enzymes, right? All this acid, they're not stomach enzymes, but the stomach acid, then the enzymes, they have more surface area to digest this chicken. It's not like eating a big whole piece of chicken breast. So the stuff digests extremely fast and easy having something already mechanically broken down like that. Anyway, um, so I had that meal, uh, between meal three and meal four, it was 20 ounces of fluid, 10 ounces of water, 10 ounces of coffee. I like keeping some coffee in on show day, like the caffeine helping with like just keeping diuresis going and also just energy. <laughs> um, I had to go back on to, to, for finals at four 30. And so I had meal, my next meal at 5 PM, which was the same meal I had for meal two before going on stage. And I was probably on stage about two hours after that meal, similar to, to prejudge. And before, before that last meal, I was 224.2. Right. So I held that 224 Perfect. All, all, all day long. Um, one thing uh, additionally, I, I would mention as well is like tanning was a big deal for this show. And I, I think you saw a lot of guys, that were probably pretty light on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, also a lot of guys, and, and I will say the live stream really washed guys out. So it wasn't accurate for like what visually was there in person, but also a lot of guys looked like they didn't have oil on. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. the stage lights were super bright, like bright white led lights. And I watched the live stream the day before when masters went. So I was trying to get my dad on what needed to happen. But anyway, I know I, I needed to get super dark. So Renee and I, two days out, did a, a self-application of tanner, a pro tan, um, mm -hmm. which worked great. We rinsed one day out. I had the show 
pro tan, do the rest. Um, on show day, normally pro tan will do one coat of their super dark, but they're like, all right, John, you look, you look good. I'm like, let's do another coat. And so I had them do two, an extra coat on show day. So I was crazy dark. I saw Terrence Ruffin go out on stage and he was like one guy that had really good oil. So he came off stage. I'm like, what did you do, Terrence? Like, what are you using? And he's like, go to Pro Tan, and they have a tub of uh, Muscle Sheen. It looks like Vaseline, right? It, and it, it just, it, it's not coming off you. And he's like, use that. Because all the other guys who were using the spray oil were dried up by the time they would get to stage. Yeah, it, it absorbs into your skin or it just evaporates, it dries off. Yeah. This stuff isn't going anywhere, man. It, but it can be a mess. That's the only thing. So I did use that muscle sheen, but I think my color in my sheen, it really stood out well on stage. My only issue, though, was that muscle sheen, how it rubs on, it can make you get a little splotchy. My tan looked a little splotchy. So that uh, that was my only like thing I need to figure out for next time. But But, man, it was helpful to be able to see what needed to happen with your stage color and the, the oil. Because so many guys just missed that and made them look look worse, right? Because of it. Yeah, that's a major, major thing. Yeah, I, I'm uh, glad that you're paying so close attention. And you did it the old fashioned way, but then you applied it uh, your own first and then rinse it off. And I mean, you have to have that base then. It makes a huge difference. I have a guys that they come like uh, vampires completely, you know, the day before a show. It's like, eh, you know. Why didn't you like at least you know get some? Yeah, I just... mean, back in the day, okay, I lived in California. That's what, you know, so maybe I would have that excuse. But I, I would always <laughs> uh, stay out and and get the base tan as much as I could. I think I, I mentioned to you, Chris, back in like eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. I didn't have a money for a pro tan. <laughs> I, I was just dark. That was that was my color when I went on the stage. I was just that dark, right? But. Uh, <clears throat> um, John, yeah, uh, ever since you, you mentioned in the beginning that uh, you're not going to compete at Olympia, like, I have something like, ah, oh. <laughs> well, I, I really, because I was going to talk to you after the the show, but I was thinking, yeah, we're going to talk today, and uh, we're going to have a more chance. Of course, you had a four days to digest, and I guess you already made a decision. I, I still do think that uh, I don't want you in 212. I would want you in, in the open division, you know, for sure, for sure. But, uh, you know, kind of to close that chapter of 212 that you can uh, get on the top. Because I honestly think you had a legitimate chance. Looking so good. You are, I was analyzing your physique, right? And uh, nothing missing. Uh, complete, thick, wide, aesthetic, tie-ins, you know, striations. I mean, legs look ridiculous, uh, like that leg from behind with the tension glue tie-in and shh, your back is ridiculous. Your shoulder, uh, hands and hips, most muscular, you know, state of the art. I, I, I really, I mean, Chris, I, I know that you also didn't agree. You're kind of like on John's side, like, okay, let's, let's build well, up. I, mm -hmm. I, the thing is, I like, understand what he's saying. If he had 36 hours... I could, I probably we could probably persuade him if like weigh in was like three days before, you know, yeah. it'd be a little different. But twenty four hours, that's super hard to work with. Well, what is the pre judging in the morning or evening? It, it's in the morning. Yeah. yeah. I, I and I I don't disagree. I think I would be competitive. It just it's just how how competitive, right? And you know, my other idea, Milos, was to do Romania, which is the week after the Olympia. But in the open, oh, yeah. and maybe get yeah, an yeah. early qualification, right? And I, I really weighed into that decision as well. Of course, that's another mm -hmm. five weeks of dieting, and you qualify early for next year. But I could just off season for five weeks and just hit an earlier show. For being on prep for so long, I find it just was the better call to go ahead and pull it back, um, and also to go all the way to Romania. It's it, such a long flight. It, it, oh it presents a lot of challenge. Now I was like, oh, Renee, we can take a vacation in Europe, like all after. Um, but honestly, like I rather not compete in, in the, in Europe just because I want to experience Europe when I go. 
So I really yeah. just go vacation Europe and compete in the States and not have so many variables I have to manage. Um, if this was like, Hey, two weeks after Legion. Yeah. This is a different situation, but having to push it out five weeks, I'm like, these weeks add up, you know, it's a, uh, um, yeah, five weeks is a little, yeah. especially as you did before. But November, mid November in Romania, weather is not so good. And uh, I mean, if you're going for vacation, you know, I, I think weather is a major thing that you should consider when you go for a vacation. Yeah, it's not you go there, it's it's cold, and you know, sure. what's the point? You know, wow. Uh, right. Before we close up, I just want to add one thing about old self Tanner. Um, I'm not sure if you knew this, John I, Milos. I think you did. Jose always did his own tan mm -hmm. and Jose would base tan and then he would do a coat a day starting seven days out. And then he would go all the way up doing base coats every day until Friday. And he'd actually rinse off completely Saturday morning before the show. So there's not any tan sitting on top of his skin. So the blotchiness would not be an issue with the oil. And Lee Priest said he did the same thing. Mm -hmm. He would never have tan sit on top because it was such a crapshoot with waking up, getting a pre, uh, getting a, your final coat, and then having to apply oil again. Is getting dark enough prior and then rinsing it off lightly, pat dry, and then go. I remember Jose telling me that he's like, he, Jose has all his clients do that too, and I'm like, look at my pale ass. I'm like, I feel like I need to start like a month out. <laughs> Yeah. So, so he would rinse all week, every day. He just stays on. Uh, apply, sleep on it, rinse, pat dry. Mm, mm, apply, okay. rinse, pat dry, and then I think two coats Friday. Sleep on it, rinse Saturday, and that's it. So and then if he needed to, he would put on. With it. Yeah, yeah, and, and then uh, Saturday morning he'd wake up, rinse, and he's like, "If I needed, I could be butchering this last part. He put Jantana coat as his final coat right before stage, like the the old Jantana." Um, and then he goes to Tan and be flawless every single time because Jose did have pretty damn good color all the time. Yeah. But yeah. I tell you this, uh, probably you heard me say that before, and I use it as a little secret. <clears throat> Dream Tan was not allowed, right? That was uh, illegal. But when you have your base tan and everything, you know, either Gentana or Pro Tan or whatever else, and then at the end, backstage, you literally with the Dream Tan, just like super thin layer, you know, like almost nothing. But when this starts like a couple of minutes later reflecting and you get that bronze shine, it was fabulous. I mean, it made a, such a huge difference, but you can't overdo it. So yeah. some, some guys heard it and they, they did it. I said, no, 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 no. This is like minimal amount, but you're going to get that, uh, you know, uh, goldish, you know, the fluorescent yeah. look. Yeah. It was good. But w one more thing before we leave, because somebody, uh, called me a coach and he goes Milos what do, you, what do you say about all this standing and all this stuff it's like well you know many times uh, guys get considerably worse as soon as they, uh, they apply this right and his theory was like okay would you put the that was the question would you put the nail polish on your skin I said, <laughs> I said, okay now where are you going with that I said like well there is acetone in uh, in uh, all these uh, tanning solutions. And uh, I said, really? I mean, I didn't really pay attention, but apparently it is. <laughs> so some people will have a, a reaction and I have seen it. I mean, I've yeah. seen it many, many times, but uh, th that's what he was uh, going to, but that's probably a topic for some other time. Uh, John did, I mean, your color was phenomenal. I didn't notice, you said that, that it was a little patchy. I didn't. Uh, no, no, just, uh, I think maybe if you're getting like, you know, really overly anal with how do you pull out every last bit, right? Um, it, it, it was a little bit, but pretty minor. Um, yeah. So uh, that it was actually one of the one of the judges had brought it up. I, we we went to dinner and they were actually sitting at a table, and I was like, I'm gonna go pick these guys' brains. Like, uh, so I talked to Tarek Gundy, right, and then also. I think he's the Tennessee state chair. He he brought up the color. He's like, "Hey, I saw this on your color." I'm like, "Okay, I haven't I haven't actually seen the pics that really show it." Um, but what did the judges tell you? Like, what you need to bring, you know, for the next show? Yeah, Tarek. He said, obviously, he said it was close. He said uh, to to have beaten Charles 
I would have had a broader condition level that would just, he's like, your condition's good, but it would have to have been out of the world, like just strip like a what, what Munzer kind of condition, right? Um, to have overpowered the muscularity that Charles had. He's like, for moving forward, he's like, don't go at a bunch of size. He's like, you could win a pro show right now. He's like, just add a little bit more to build out the X frame. So a little quad sweep, a little lat, some delt. He's like, but do not sacrifice your waist. He's like, these guys are getting big. He's like, he named some guys. Um, I will repeat it. Uh, that's for him to say, but he's like, they're growing, but their waist has come up and we notice it all. Right. Yeah. Um, and he, even on, he, even the competitors that were there at the show, he's like, you know, this guy, this guy, they're letting their waist relax in these transitions and we catch it all. We see it all. He's like, so they're just, they just had such an important point of like, make sure you, your waist doesn't increase in size. And then for me, just build out more of an X ring, which is different because for 212, I've been in this weight cap. So it's real specific, like build a little bit more delt and lat, but don't bring up legs. I just don't have the weight to be able to do it. But now I'm almost back to like this uh, more intermediate level of just, hey, you just need a bit more overall growth. Uh, to build out the X frame, so he said just just a little bit more size and take my time with it, and and that's it. I think overall I'm I don't have some glaring weak point. I'm I'm pretty balanced and complete. That's good. Thing. Absolutely, John. It's been so I'm so happy you, you agreed to come on, man. We wanted to. I was like thinking before your show, and I was like, Milos, we got to get John to come on after. Like I don't want to bug him too much because post show you want to unwind, you know. And I remember I messaged you. I'm like, I'm just going to shoot this out in the dark. But, John, you want to jump on real quick after the show? And you said yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I want to talk about this. But, oh, dude, man, I'm so really excited to talk about it. Like, I'm I'm on fire for bodybuilding again. Like, and, and this is part of it, Milos, is that I'm not excited about 212. Like, I have zero motivation to go and diet down and suck down to 212. Like, there's just – I have no excitement to do it. I'm I'm ready for open. Like, I'm, I'm fired up for it. I'm so excited. So – uh, that that is a big driving factor. Like I want to do the things that I love, and that uh, is a huge motivator okay. for me. Like you said before, like you don't want to go backwards, and uh, this is yeah. one thing I was saying to IBB before even this classic physique where they had that weight cap. I said, "What do you mean? So forever and ever, whoever is at the top of the weight, they can never improve. So next five years, they have to stay under. You know. So I was even suggesting for that you have some progressive, you know, increase so people can keep bodybuilding and improving but for you yeah uh again I, i'm not gonna zip it up i, I just really <laughs> thought that you're gonna you're gonna just like squeak in like that one more final time which i thought would be, but uh, i hear you focus on uh, on the shows next year uh, you know look you went from 214 to 224 right in how many months five yeah. weeks Four, right? 14 five weeks uh oh, yeah, it was like 12 weeks of actual 12 weeks yeah yeah so imagine you know by uh are you gonna do the Arno classic <laughs> I, 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 I would love to do the Arnold Classic, but probably 2025, right? That's oh. uh, yeah. That, that's definitely a bucket list one to do to step on that stage. Get a so, solid off season in there. So, yeah, we don't have a list of uh, 2024 shows, but I assume it's going to be a bunch. Yeah. So, why, why do you think you're going to do the like New York like mid year? Uh, or, uh, ideally, I'd like to wait to the fall again and hit some string of shows then. I would need to see the schedule. Legion yeah. was an awesome show. I would absolutely do that one again. But I definitely want some more chances, though. So something earlier. I know we had Texas, and then it's a huge jump all the way to Legion. So I'm hoping there's something in the U.S. in the middle. If not, I would be open to, I guess, go to Europe, maybe do a Europe show, then come back and do Legion or something. But ideally, if I could have like a, a good – 16 20 weeks of just off season before i need to jump back into a prep uh but I think wrong but this, this year there was new york chicago florida and texas like all back to back to back yeah they're all really close together then that was it yeah. until legion and then you have so all the see, for, for me if i would be in your shoes you more than anybody else you control everything like you're so stable you you uh, on top of everything it would be much easier for you to to peak, you know, four times. It's not like you're doing these drastic things. Yeah. So, yeah, because you're ready for one show. You just repeat or 
tweak around in the, in the experiment. It's such an anyway, easier I, peak too. Like, it, like two twelves is kind of rough. Um, yeah. It's very depleting. So I could easily hit more shows. I want to do, I want to plan out a few shows to do, not just like a, a, a one or two, like have a, have, have some lined up. Milos, you'd be happy with that. I know, so. <laughs> Listen, I'm a friend. Congratulations. Thank you. you know, uh, I would love to chat with you any time I have a chance. Uh, actually, we have like a gazillion other questions. Maybe yeah. maybe I have your phone number there. I would call you yeah. first. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. All right okay, John, hey, John, talk about uh, your next release date on your um, J3 University. Yeah. If uh, y'all like to learn uh, like I do, um, J3 University, I have my level one course of how to do bodybuilding, A to Z, uh, nutrition, training, PDs, health monitoring, all, all my log of exactly what I did for peak week and off season, I put all up on the forum. So the first Tuesday of every month, we open up for three days for new coaches or athletes to enroll. So this next one, where that falls would be real quick on my calendar. Um, we're going to do November 1st to the 3rd. Um, so that'll open up for anyone that's interested in learning yeah, more about the bodybuilding process. Yeah. And to attest to uh, J3 University, I've been a coach for a long time. I took it when it first came out. It's great. And a lot of my clients come to me and they're like, Chris, I want to learn to become a coach. What kind of literature is out there that's good? And I'm like, listen, if you want the full everything, check out John's stuff, J3 University. And no, I'm not getting any money or I'm not plugging for it. It's just, it's good. It works. Um, and it's complete. That's the most important thing. Yeah, but John, right. I appreciate it again, man. And then yeah. uh, we'll definitely have you on again in the middle of the off season to see how things are going. Yeah, guys. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Hey, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you want us to continue to make great content, please hit the like button below and also subscribe. And did you also know we have an official website, ifbama.org, where you can check out a lot of all these episodes with deleted scenes, especially ones we cannot show on YouTube or any other platform. Comment below. If you have any questions or suggestions on how to make this show better, please, we would love to hear your feedback. Thanks again for watching IFBB AMA Podcast. We will see you guys next time.